Hello everyone and welcome back once again. In this video, we are going to talk about a very important topic and that is on iron carbon phase diagram. So I have divided this into two parts. This video will cover the part one. Iron carbon phase diagram is one such diagram, you know, which is really very useful in the sense that if we say that the whole steel technology is based on this diagram, it will not be wrong. And we will see as we proceed with this, we will see as to why is that so. I mean, why this diagram is so important and how this particular diagram is useful to develop so many different kinds of steel, okay, which are used in variety of applications, right. So, that is the importance of this diagram and that is why we want to study it. This is how it looks like. There will be lot of uh, things which will look familiar by now. As I said, you already have some idea about how a phase diagram looks like and what are those lines and things like that. Okay? So, you would find lot of uh, those things here also, lot of familiar things that we have already gone through before. So, first let us go through this diagram and then I will come back to it and describe it in little more detail as to why it is so useful in developing one material which is steel, but in that same material you can develop so many variety of grades. Okay? So, as to why is that so, I mean for the same material how you can develop so many different grades, this diagram will explain that as to why is that so why so many different types of materials, the same material in different grades can be generated. It is simply because of the fact that this diagram has so many different aspects and phases, you know, which can be tuned in a manner that will generate a different microstructure altogether for the same material which is steel. Okay? So, that is what we will come to when we discuss this in more detail as I said, but right now let us just briefly go through it as to what are those different features and what phases are present in an iron carbon phase diagram. Okay? So, we can uh, start from uh, bottom from here and go up and then go from left to right and see what are the phases coming up. Okay? So, if you start from here on the left corner and go up, you would find you know there are basically three phases coming in. Alpha gamma and delta. Okay? So, pure iron uh, is a material which can exist in different crystallographic form at different temperatures. So, this is a property which is uh, known as allotropy. Okay? So, iron is a material which shows this allotropic property in the sense that it can exist in different crystal structures at different temperatures. Okay? So, at room temperature to certain temperature up to 910 degree Celsius, iron exists in BCC crystal structure and this particular phase of iron is known as alpha or ferrite. Okay? Then if you go beyond this temperature, if you go above 910 degree Celsius in the pure iron form, then it transforms to an FCC phase known as austenite and written as gamma, okay? which you can see over here and if I go back to the diagram, this is what you see. Okay? So, up to this point, 910 degree Celsius, you have the BCC form of pure iron and if you go beyond that, till about 1400 degree Celsius, this gamma phase which is FCC will exist. Okay? If you go further up in the temperature, you would find another phase known as delta. So, this is also a ferrite phase, but this is delta ferrite again this is BCC. Okay? So, you could see that you know at different temperatures, pure iron could exist in different crystal structures. 
So, this is known as allotropy or a property known as an allotropic property and this transformation accordingly would be known as allotropic transformation ok alpha to gamma then gamma to delta at those particular temperatures 910 degree Celsius then 1400 degree Celsius ok. So, this is about pure iron. Now, what is steel? I think by now you would know steel is an interstitial alloy or interstitial solid solution of iron with carbon. Okay. So, it is basically an iron carbon solid solution or alloy. Okay. So, now depending on how much carbon you have in iron, you can generate different kinds of steels. And as I said in the beginning, you can also generate different kinds of microstructures. Okay? And that is why this uh, diagram is so important as to if you want to understand how these microstructures can be generated, you know, then you have to go through this and if you if you go by that, you would be able to generate different properties by tuning the microstructure. So, that will give you as I said different grades of steel whenever you want to you know uh, look for a particular application having a particular requirements in terms of the properties you come back to this and tune the microstructure in a manner which will generate those properties. Okay? So, that is why this diagram is so useful as I said in the beginning. So, we have seen the pure iron in different forms. Now, we will add carbon to it in different amounts and see from here as to what are those phases that can exist in this iron carbon diagram or in this iron carbon alloys. Okay. If you talk about the ferrite phase itself, you could see that it is terminating at a point which is about 0 0.025 percent of carbon here. right? So, this tells you that ferrite iron alpha iron has limited solubility for carbon okay? because it can only dissolve a maximum of 0 0.025 percent of carbon that too at some elevated temperature. right? So, at room temperature it is really low, it is almost close to pure iron. Okay? So, now we will try and find those invariant points. What are those points? We have already studied what an invariant reaction is and what kind of uh, product phases will form out of these reactions. Okay. What did you study before in terms of these invariant points or invariant reactions? We have studied eutectic, peritectic and monotectic. So, here you know you would see at least two of them that is eutectic and peritectic that we have studied before there is more I will come to that, but at least two of those that we have already studied before you can see here okay? the eutectic reaction and the peritectic reaction. So, you know this kind of invariant reactions will occur at a particular composition and at a particular temperature also is not it. So, that means we have to look at uh, those temperatures and compositions in this particular diagram and see where they are occurring. Okay? So, let us uh, go up again in the temperature uh, on the left hand side itself and uh, if you come all the way here you know uh, let us say uh, from this side and go all the way here to this point what do you see? Does it look like an invariant point? Yes, it does and it is inverted in terms of these two lines that you see over here right. Yes, so these two inverted lines like that will tell you that this is a peritectic point. Okay. Can we identify the eutectic? I will come back to the peritectic again. So, now let us go to little higher carbon content on the right hand side and go somewhat below and come here around 4 percent carbon. What do you see here? Just above this you see the liquid phase. 
and now if you just come down below that particular temperature which is 1146 degree Celsius, in some books you might find it 1147 also, that it is around that and that particular composition of 4 percent carbon. So, at this point that is 4.3 percent carbon to be precise and 1146 degree Celsius, the eutectic reaction occurs in this particular system. Okay. And what is that eutectic reaction here? While we talk about this eutectic reaction, we will come across one more phase here. Okay. Gamma phase I have already described that is the FCC iron. So, eutectic reaction we know when a liquid transforms into two solids, right? Okay. So, here one solid is of course the gamma austenite, this is also known as austenite and the other phase is iron carbide Fe3C. Okay. This is known as cementite. Okay, so, we have identified two invariant reactions. First of all, on the higher temperature side, we have this peritectic over here. That is one solid plus liquid transforming into a new solid. Okay, and in this case of iron carbon system, we have the delta plus liquid transforming into the gamma phase. Okay. And uh, if you look at this point, this is at 1495 degree Celsius and 0.17 percent carbon. Okay. And then here at 1146 degree Celsius, you have the eutectic where the liquid phase is transforming into austenite plus cementite. Okay. So, let me again come back to the phases now. So, these are the different phases that you would come across in the iron carbon system. Okay. Alpha ferrite that is the interstitial solid solution of carbon in BCC iron. Okay. And the maximum solubility of carbon is 0.025 percent as I said and it exists from room temperature to 910 degree Celsius. Beyond 910 degree Celsius, we have the austenite or the gamma phase which is FCC and it can contain a carbon up to 2.1 percent. Okay. After that, we have that delta ferrite which is again BCC and exists over a temperature range of 1394 degree Celsius to 1539 degree Celsius. And beyond that, you know that it is uh, the liquid iron because 1539 is the melting point of pure iron. Okay. Then this phase we have already described this iron carbide known as cementite. In fact, this is one phase which defines the boundary of this phase diagram. If you go back to it, I will come back to it in a while. And the carbon content of this particular phase is 6.67 percent. Okay. But cementite is metastable and can dissociate under certain conditions, especially at high carbon concentration to generate the free form of carbon that will exist in the form of graphite. Okay. But that is not in steel. It will happen when the carbon content is much higher than steel and in fact, there is a set of ferrous materials which contain carbon beyond 2 percent. So, in those materials known as cast irons, carbon can exist in the free form as graphite. Okay. So, in that sense, graphite can also be a phase in this particular system. 
So, these uh, first four or five phases are actually the equilibrium phases. Particularly, this uh, first four, you would find them in the equilibrium phase diagram as we have just now discussed, right. But you could also generate two more phases known as bainite and martensite, which will again give you a different set of properties as I was mentioning in the beginning, okay. But these two phases are not present in the phase diagram simply because these two phases do not form under equilibrium conditions, okay. So, in the phase diagram, the phases that you see would all be those phases which form under equilibrium conditions, okay. But bainite and martensite, although you would find them in many steels, do not form in equilibrium conditions. They will form only when the cooling rate is high, okay. And in the phase diagram, it is, uh, uh, it is a condition where cooling rates are not high. In fact, the phase diagram that we have depicts a condition where the cooling rates are really, really very slow, okay, so that the phases can equilibrate. You have enough time for the phases to come in equilibrium, right. So, any phase which forms in conditions away from equilibrium such as high cooling rate will not be present in the phase diagram, but that does not mean that those phases are not there, okay. So, here for example, you have these two phases, bainite and martensite, which could be there. We will talk about this as to under what conditions uh, this could form and what kind of properties these two phases can change it, okay. Now, let me go back to our main idea of uh, the physical metallurgy that is uh, the structured property correlation that we always talk about whenever we talk about physical metallurgy. In this particular system, in one of those phases as to why the carbon is low in that particular phase. And on the other hand, when you transform that phase to another phase, the carbon content is increasing significantly, okay. So, this is a property, right? I mean, the solubility of carbon in a material is a kind of observation or a property that you see in a particular material. So, now we would uh, try and understand as to why is that so? Why the carbon content of alpha ferrite is so low compared to austenite, okay? So, this goes back to the structure again because that is how we have seen how the structure dictates the properties. Okay. So, what is the structure here? In case of alpha ferrite, it is BCC, right? And what is the structure of austenite? FCC. So, first of all, it has to do with that structure, but it is not all when you want to explain this particular property, that is not all that you need, okay? You will have to understand since we are talking about carbon content here, the solubility of carbon, we have to understand where this carbon sits in this BCC and this FCC lattice, okay. So, as you could see from here, iron carbon alloys or the steels are interstitial solid solution of carbon in iron, okay. So, that means carbon sits in the interstitial voids. We have already seen what an interstitial space is, the space which lies in between the regular lattice sites. So, does not matter which crystal structure you have, there would be always voids between the atoms, right. It cannot be 100 percent packed, right. In fact, the, the kind of uh, crystal structure that uh, we deal with, the maximum that you could have is in FCC, that is around 74 percent, okay. So, that means you have uh, that much of void, 26 percent of uh, void, right. Where are these voids located? Are they random? We are not talking about a random arrangement of atoms and therefore, the voids in between them will also not be random, okay. They will be located at particular lattice positions like how the atoms are located at particular lattice sites, right. So, uh, if you have gone through it, uh, there are two kinds of uh, voids in crystal lattice. 
octahedral and tetrahedral okay and you probably know what these voids are and how they form in a crystal lattice if you have four atoms together and in between them if you see the holes or the voids that will give you the tetrahedral void similarly if six atoms come together to you know to make that arrangement in the lattice sites then you would have the octahedral voids in between them okay now carbon sits in the octahedral voids in the octahedral interstitial sites okay so bcc has uh, octahedral sites fcc also has octahedral sites now why the carbon content is so different that has to do with the size of these octahedral sites this octahedral voids that you have in bcc and fcc okay if the size of these octahedral voids is low is small then it will be difficult for the carbon atom to go into it right and therefore the solubility would be lower so let us see for the bcc iron and for fcc iron what is that size in terms of the size of the iron atom what fraction of that is the size of the octahedral void in bcc and fcc what fraction of the size of the iron atom so in case of uh, bcc iron the size of these voids in terms of the radius of the iron atoms is 0.15 r where r is the radius of the iron atom okay let us see for uh, fcc or the gamma iron the size is 0.414 r okay which is significantly higher compared to what you have in case of ferrite iron or bcc which is only 0.15 r okay so now you can see a beautiful a really good example of uh, the structure property correlation here as to why the solubility of carbon in bcc iron is significantly lower compared to that in fcc iron okay because the size of the interstitial void where carbon sits is much lower in the bcc iron compared to that in fcc iron okay that is why gamma iron or uh, the fcc form of iron can hold more amount of carbon at a particular temperature compared to the bcc iron and that is why the solubility of carbon in the fcc austenite phase is much higher compared to that in the bcc phase okay and how much it can go maximum if you go back to this you would see that is it goes up to about 2% or 2.1% to be more specific okay so this is how you can you know with the help of uh, the structure property correlations you would be able to explain why the solubility of carbon is different in different forms of iron okay so this was a beautiful example of structure property correlation that you could see here okay so now that uh, we have seen the different phases which can exist uh, in the iron carbon system we can go ahead and see different critical temperatures because these are the temperatures which will dictate the phases and the phase transformation that you have in this particular system so let us see what are those uh, critical temperatures in this particular system so apart from uh, these two invariant reactions that we have discussed you have something more here as i was mentioning and that is quite interesting also if you come down here in this range okay come down all the way to this particular point over here okay from the single phase austenite region if you come down to about 727 degree celsius at that particular temperature and at about 
8% carbon, you see something very similar to a U technique. This is very interesting because here there is no liquid phase. That is why I marked this region in the beginning itself because this belongs to the gamma phase, which is a solid phase. But it is very similar to the U technique. You could see that one particular phase is transforming to two different solid phases. Okay. So, in case of eutectic, the liquid phase was transforming into two different solid phases of different compositions and structure. Here, one solid phase is transforming into two other solid phases of different composition and crystal structure. Okay. So, you could say that this is the solid state equivalent of the eutectic reaction. And what is this called? It is called eutectoid. So, the eutectoid reaction occurs at 727 degree Celsius at 0.8 percent carbon. Okay. And when we deal with steels, this is the region that is of interest to us from this to this, that is from pure iron to about 2 percent of carbon because in that region only you would find most of the steels. In fact, the carbon content in steel is hardly beyond 1 percent carbon in most of the steels. You would only find few steels where the carbon could be close to 1 percent where the hardness has to be really high like tool steels. Only on those kind of steels you would find a carbon content which is close to 1. Rest of all, you would find a carbon content which is much below 1 percent. Okay. So, this is the region of interest you know from pure iron to 2 percent carbon where all the steels will lie. Beyond that if you go beyond that 2 percent of carbon there is something else that we will we'll come back to it later. But all the steels will be within this region from pure iron to 2 percent of carbon. Okay. And this, this particular invariant reaction that is why it becomes very important because here we do not really deal with the eutectic reaction anymore because that comes at 4 percent carbon. Okay. So, all the phase transformation and tuning the structure and so on will happen with respect to this particular reaction now which is the eutectoid reaction. Okay. The gamma phase is transforming into ferrite and cementite. Okay. So, this is also an invariant reaction where one solid transforms into two different solids with different composition and structure. Okay. The other thing that I mentioned is this cementite phase that you have the Fe3C also forms the boundary of this particular diagram. So, this boundary that you see the limiting boundary is the 6.67 percent carbon. So, practically you know you will not get anything useful beyond this particular carbon content. right? So, that is why it uh, kind of stops there and this particular phase which is along that vertical line defines that boundary, that limiting boundary. Okay? So, cementite phase which is along this uh, vertical line having a carbon content of 6.67 percent will define the limiting boundary of this particular system. Okay.